Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Renewable Energy Study Group. In today's video, we're going to be talk about how we can design the biogas plant. As we know that the biogas plant we are utilizing to get the bioenergy in the form of the natural gas and that we can utilize instead of the LPG gas. So in the today's session, we're going to be see exactly how we can able to design this biogas plant by using a one kind of an problem statement. And from that, we exactly learn how exactly we can able to design all other parameter in the biogas plant field. So let's say we're going to be designing the biogas plant for a family of the 10 member and estimate that we require to calculate the total gas required for the family of the 10 member, amount of the feedstock or the cattle dung which is required to feed into the digester and get the requisite amount of the total gas which is required for a family member and the number of animal required to supply that much amount of the cattle dung to run the biogas plant continuously. So this is our problem statement and this kind of the calculation that we have to be do in this particular lecture. So here we're going to be see first of all the assumptions because whenever we are designing any biogas plant we have to be assume some parameter which is a true parameter we can say. About a 400 liters of the biogas which is required per day per person for the cooking. This is on an average observation as per the research. That is of 400 liters of biogas that we required per person consisting of their breakfast, consisting of the lunch, their after the dinner and all other parameter. Average production of the cattle dung when we see actually that is of per animal basis. So we'll find that the cow is producing the 10 kg per day that is of cattle dung. Bullock is producing the 14 kg per day and buffalo is producing the 15 kg per day. Whenever we are actually designing or installing the biogas plant, we must be able to ensure whether we have the requisite supply of the cattle dung for, as a slurry into this biogas plant or not. And according to that, we have to take the steps at the design procedure of a biogas plant. So, 1000 liter of the gas is equivalent to the 1 meter cube of gas. This is an assumption that is of true value that we can say. 1000 liters of gas is uh, 1 meter cube uh, of that particular biogas. Average gas production from the dung is about the 40 liter per kg of the fresh dung. This kind of the assumption that we're going to be considered. That is of 40 liter, that much amount of the biogas is actually producing on the 1 kg of cattle dung that we are feeding into this particular slurry. Period of the dung slurry into the digester, that is we can say the retention period in this case, which is a 55 days. Generally, the retention period of this kind of a slurry or the cattle dung we are, that we are feeding into the digester is depending upon the temperature factor also. Wherever we are designing or installing the biogas plant and the arid temperature will be there or higher temperature will be there, that is actually enhancing the biogas production in that case. So in that case, the retention period is reducing also. So on an average period, we're going to be considered as an 55 days for our calculation. So in the step number second, we'll consider the amount of the gas that is required per day basis. So if you first of all calculate how much amount of the gas is required for the 10 family member, and then we'll start designing this biogas plant. As we know that the one family is consisting of the total 10 member as per the problem statement, Considering that 400 liters of the gas will be required per day by per person for the cooking. So the total gas is 10 multiplied by 400, which we are getting as an 4000 liters of this kind of the biogas that will be required per day basis for the family. As we know that the 1000 liters of the biogas is equivalent to the 1 meter cube of gas. So the 4000 liter per day of the biogas is equivalent to the 4 meter cube of the gas. Because the gaseous parameter actually we are measuring in terms of the meter cube whenever we are designing the digester tank also and other kind of the tank also. Now in the step number three, we're going to be considered the total amount of the dung that is required. Because once we know how much amount of the gas we exactly required on the output side, then the input side, how much amount of the dung that we have to be feed on the daily basis. Amount of the gas which is being produced by one kg of the fresh cattle dung that is of 40 liters per kg, this as per our assumption and as per the research. Total amount of the dung which has been required for this kind of the process and the design is that total gas at the end user. So we have total 4000 
liters of the gas will be required on daily basis divided by the gas per kg of the dung from the 1 kg of the dung how much amount of the gas is producing that is of 40 liters per kg so from this we can calculate how much kg of the cattle dung will be required actually and by this particular calculation we required this much kg of the cattle dung will be required as per the calculation like a uh, 100 kg of the cattle dung that is been required at the ultimate case once we required or once we have calculated the amount of the cattle dung and then we can segregate it from how much amount of the cattle dung that we are taking from individual animal because if we have a cow if we have a bullock or the buffalo or any other animal that is producing uh, this kind of the cattle dung and that we can able to give it over here so animal to animal basis this quantity will going to be vary over here so let's say for as per our calculation the 100 kg of the dung will be required on the ultimate case so the cow that we required basically 100 kg by 10 kg because one cow is producing the 10 kg per day basis so we required on an average the 10 cows if you are totally depending on the cow if you take the bullock also that is of 100 kg of the cattle dung a bullock is producing the 14 kg one day so seven bullocks are required similarly the when we talk about the buffalo also we require the seven buffalo so either we can take the 10 cows either we can consider the seven buffalo and the bullock over here or other we can take the combination also five and three like uh, six and two such kind of the combination we can work out over here next is that Step number four, which is the design of the digester and the gas holder system. This is very important in the biogas power plant design actually. That is how much volume of the digester that we have to be considered. It depends upon how much amount of the slurry that we are feeding on the daily basis. So to make the slurry of the dunk equal amount of the water we require. So let's, let's say if we are feeding the 100 kg of the dunk that is of cattle dung then equal amount of the water that we have to be add because the amount of the biogas production is depend upon the liquidity value of that particular dung that we are exactly inserting into the digester so total amount of the mass of the slurry when we see it is on an average the 200 kg that we have to be uh, calculated over here similarly based upon the amount of the slurry we can just say that volume of the slurry per day basis in terms of the meter cube will going to be calculated over here. So for that purpose, we must know what is the specific gravity of the slurry is about 1090 kg per meter cube. So on an average, the specific gravity of the water that will going to be considered over here. But on an average, as per the research, when we see, we used to consider the 1090 kg per meter cube this is a specific gravity so the total amount of the mass of the slurry will be the 200 kg divided by the 1090 kg per meter cube from this we get the answer in terms of an meter cube which is 0 0.18 meter cube of the volume that we require to store this particular slurry so this is a calculated value actually for the one day basis now the retention period we are actually considering as 55 days it means that 55 day we have to keep the slurry into the digester and then actually we are getting start getting a kind of a biogas in mid time period over here. So the total volume of the digester when we see it is a per day volume of the slurry which is a 0 0.18 per day volume in terms of a meter cube multiply by the retention period of the 55 days and from this we get answer as 9.90 meter cube. This is the overall volume of the digester that we have to be select. You can take more than this, but we cannot take lesser than this basically whenever we work out on such kind of the biogas designing system. Instead of calculation, we can utilize the thumb rule also like the thumb rule says that digester volume should be about 2.75 times of the volume of the gas, which is required on the per day basis. So when we required the one meter cube of the gas, so multiply by 2.75, this answer will be very close to 10 or 11 meter cube. So on an average that also we can consider this kind of an thumb rule or we can go for the detail calculation part also. Then in the step number five, we have to consider the dimension of the digester. So as per the calculation part, that is of 9.9 .9 meter cube of the volume as per the calculation. So depth to diameter ratio when we consider for the digester, it is close to 1 to 1.3 we have to keep actually depth to diameter ratio and once we keep this particular ratio as an fix then we can vary this parameter as per the total volume that we know 9.9 9 .9 meter cube 
and depth to diameter ratio then we can consider the diameter as 2.2 meter and depth as 2.6 meter you can change also actually this parameter you, you can also able to change over here you can consider any two or subsequent calculation you can do for this particular value so like that about this kind of the depth diameter and depth will be required whenever we design this kind of a digester next in the step number six we consider the gas holder tank gas holder tank is also very important whenever we are designing any floating dome type of the project rather we can design any fixed dome type of an project so volume of the gas holder tank should be about 60 percent of the per day gas volume so how much amount of the gas will be required on per day basis so about 60 percent of that at least we have to give this particular amount of the gas to holder tank volume it might be the floating one it might be the fixed type of the tank you can consider as the temperature of the slurry is increases the gas production also increases and maximum gas production yields at 45 degree to 55 degree you can take this is the ideal temperature for generation of the biogas into the digester next we're going to be consider the step number seven that is a cost of the biogas plant cost of the biogas plant as per the various countries you can consider actually as per the whatever the uh money that actually in the subsequent country according to that you can consider in some country the inflation will be more in some country it is been lesser on on an average will going to be see but on in rupees term will going to be see over here in this particular session like the gas holder and the frame uh, as per the market standard when we see it is closely 10,000 rupees we required piping and the stove 5,000 we required civil engineering construction tank inlet outlet pipe etc it is required the 25,000 rupees and on an average when we see the 40,000 rupees will be required for this much amount of the biogas plant production and designing for case over here. So depending upon the country to country place to place this kind of the cost some way it might get very over here. Cost of the slurry has not been included over here because if it is readymately available at the time of the consumer, he can utilize or he can purchase also on the daily basis from any other kind of the consumer that we can consider. So in this way, exactly we can able to design how this particular biogas power plant exactly we can able to design with the various kind of the technical terminologies. After we can take the step number eight like a payback period then if you have calculated the how much amount of the cost will be required then what will be the payback period so for the calculation of the payback period we try to compare the biogas system with the lpg gas system amount of the lpg which is required by the person that is a 2 kg will be required per person on monthly basis total lpg required by the 10 person as per the case study per month basis when we see 2 kg per person on the monthly basis so for the 10 person it is required the 20 kg of the cylinder per month basis as we know that the cost of the lpg per kg it is 64 rupees based upon the inflation rate based upon the country to country this particular value might get vary total cost of the lpg when we see if we use in the place of the biogas if you are not using the biogas plant if you are totally using the lpg gas then how much amount of the gas will be required 20 kg per month multiplied by the 64 rupees that is the cost of the per kg of the lpg we get 1280 rupees will be the total amount of the gas saving will be there if you are using this particular lpg and not using the biogas and if you are shifting towards the biogas then this much amount of the cost will going to be safe 1280 rupees monthly basis so yearly basis when we see actually this value by 12 uh, multiply by 12 so we get 15,360 rupees per yearly basis so this is a overall yearly value that we'll able to save when we are installing this kind of an biogas system so the payback period when we see over here it is a total cost of the biogas plant divided by the yearly saving that we have to be considered total cost we have calculated on an average of 40,000 rupees divided by the 15,360 which is the yearly saving you can say and from this we get answer of 2.60 years this much amount of the payback period that we can consider so the on an average payback period for any biogas plant will be vary from the two years to the 3.5 years in that particular case so in this way we can able to design the technical parameters and technical terminologies in the design procedure of biogas plant 
we are from the renewable energy study group you can visit to our website for more courses based upon the renewable energy like the various courses that we are offering more than 60 plus courses on solar wind biogas plant waste management solid waste management e-waste and carbon footprint and all other parameter we are daily offering the various kinds of the offer on this kind of the courses so you can uh, see the description box for the offers of various courses based upon the renewable energy subscribe to our channel for getting the more information on the renewable energy follow us on the all other kind of the social platform thank you